So today I will be actually continuing where I kind of stopped. Well, I never really went there the last month. Uh, there was a user who uh, came up with an interesting question and sort of that used up my time. So I thought to just revisit. Uh, and in the meantime, <laughs> I thought last month to revisit H5Pi issues and things like that. And then in the meantime, uh, there was a new release of H5Pi. And there's also release of HDF5 library with some things that are now in H5Pi as well. So um, kind of made it, this delay made it even bigger deal than what would have been last month. So um, share the screen. Where is the, uh... oh, there you go. Okay, so I hope that you see the uh, screen that I'm sharing. And uh, so as I said, H5Pi 3.11 was released last week. And so um, I'll just pick up some of the things that were uh, new in that release. Uh, the One of the main drivers actually to make this release was that NumPy 2.0 is approaching its own release. And because H5Pi <laughs> package now is uh, becoming a foundation, foundational data package in, in, the, in the scientific Python world, many other projects were coming to H5Pi repository asking, when are you going to add NumPy 2.0 release candidate uh, testing? And apparently NumPy 2.0 uh, will not be backward compatible with NumPy 1.x. I, I don't know exactly what is going to change. I have not followed that, but that's what the other people were saying. And so um, really that was the kind of driving force to cut the release of H5Pi now so that uh, it can go uh, officially and get tested with release candidates of NumPy. So that's this one. Um, these two uh, new capabilities were um, actually there was a there was a bug request report that um, that there were some issues when uh, someone was following the external links in HDFI files, and so uh, long story short, uh, there was some kind of deficiency identified in the in the group class of H5Pi that needed updating. So this is the, the, um, the, the fix is in there now. And that will be now be available as well. So the, when you essentially iterate over links in a group and there, that group happens to have external links, then that will be followed as well. Um, and I also think that there was a issue also with the, um, the file access property lists of the master file were not really transferred correctly when uh, trying to visit the external links. And that was also fixed in this case. And I actually think that was also fixed on the library side, but like, like it's been a while, so I'm not sure. Um, the other than that, there was one user who uh, really was very, very uh, invested in very closely examining the impact of how many chunks, how many links in the group, all that kind of, uh, how much that that costs. So this was the user who uh, wanted to really, at the lowest level, study the impact of uh, when an HDFI group has uh, or data set metadata has more chunks and things like that. So he um, provided um, or exposed those structure fields in the H5O InfoT uh, library structure um, that can now be accessed from H5Pi. Um, and so that's that. Uh, they were, I mean, the support for the structure was already there, just these fields were not um, accessible. So he made them accessible now. Um, and um, obviously this raises some issues that you could have some kind of a H5 stat functionality now straight from the H5.5 level, which, you know, we'll see where it goes. But uh, um, obviously, <laughs> it will be easier to develop all kinds of statistics now um, from the Python if ever needed be. Um, bug fixes, yes. Um, this is a, 
uh, as I said, the HDF5 library 1.14.4 was released last week. And so um, these changes were really just to make the H5Pi tests uh, uh, pass. Um, and uh, one was the change in how file locking behaves. Um, and there was one H5Pi test that, that in the previous versions uh, didn't throw uh, an error. The library didn't throw an error. Uh, and now with 114.4, it did. And again, it was, I think, the consequence of a bug fix on the HDF5 library side from a file creation creation property list or something like that. Uh, and so um, that's done. The other testing things were uh, just additions to testing with a uh, ROS3, read-only S3 driver, uh, and working with paged or not paged HDF5 files. Uh, right now, the library uh, is much more forgiving now when you are working with HDF5 files without a priori knowledge of whether or not they're paged or not paged. And so there were some tests added there to enable that, to test that functionality. Um, Ether chunks it was an, a long-standing uh, class and feature in, in the H5Pi that allowed you when you had a slicing operation through an HDF5 data set, you could actually iterate over the chunks that would be involved in that data read operation. And someone uh, reported a bug uh, with these chunks that were identified. It's purely Python. It doesn't rely on the um, on the HDF5 library. So it's not a bug in the library. The library was doing good. Um, and so that's fixed as well. Um, this one, uh, uh, basically what was discovered there was, I'm not sure that issue, when we go back to issues, um, there was an issue problem with reading external data set. And uh, what turned out to be the case, if one wants to create an external data set, um, H5Pi, this is problem on H5Pi side. Uh, as soon as someone would decide um, an extendable uh, HDF5 data set, the H5Pi would immediately switch on chunking or turn on chunking. And in, but in the case of external data sets, you actually cannot do chunking. Uh, and so there was a problem with HFI and that was also fixed. So now when you actually create the external data set and you want to make it extendable, and that's only allowed on the first dimension, not no other, uh, then this will be now possible from HFI. Um, other things that went in, uh, is also uh, that Cython, which is the glue between Python and the HDF5 library functions and API, um, also made a big upgrade recently to three point something, three zero, I think it's already three zero ten or something. But anyway, it, it, there were some issues. Um, there were some changes. Uh, and this is just, those were the, the, the changes, the modification, just to make H5 comp uh, you know, to compile with this new version of Cython. There is a bunch of other issues, for example, um, in Cython 3, they did away with if else um, compiler directives. Um, they're now, you know, when you when you build HYPI, there's will be billion <laughs> deprecation warning messages from Cython that that needs to go away. And uh, HYPI actually heavily relies on that functionality uh, to deal with various HDF5 library versions over time. And you know which feature is available in what version, you know, what structure, what definition of the structure from the library, that kind of stuff. So it'll be interesting to see how much work and effort will be, will require to basically win off HYPI source code from from if then directives um, in Cypher. And uh, GCC fourteen, I don't know what it is. Uh, I'm not user of GCC fourteen. I'm a feeling kind of guy. And so uh, I don't know what they are, but glad, glad that they are there. And so those are the kind of things, nothing too much, but kind of fundamentally substantial. Oh, yes, by the way, of course, I forgot to mention um, and here the support, the native support in H5Pi for two byte or short or 16 bit floating data types. Uh, previously, H5Pi was using uh, custom data type definition that the HDF5 library allows. Uh, but now since in 1.14.4, there is a native support for 16-bit floating data types. Um, 
H5P will now rely, if it's working with HD 114.4 library, will rely on that native support. So those are the, the kind of things that went in, um, in this release. Um, of interesting issues, let me know if there are any questions or anything other than that, I'll just go through these things. Um, So this is all, yeah, this was an interesting, I think. Oh no, this is an interesting uh, feature request. Basically someone is asking if we, uh, if someone can provide HRIPI and HDF5 library for uh, WebAssembly. Um, and so Pyodide is essentially a Python um, interpreter in, in WebAssembly. And so this is interesting. Uh, I don't think this project, the H5P group will take over this responsibility, but it's interesting that people are showing interest. <laughs> interesting that, yeah, that, that they are now interested in, in essentially running Python and H5P and HD5 library in WebAssembly. And um, that's interesting. Um, this is actually the issue that, uh, I talked about in my previous month, but uh, I don't think any any new uh, information is available. Basically, everything kind of stopped maybe a few days after my talk. So we'll see what happens. Um, the other things are older ones. Um, so I don't think anything is... Uh, this is more of a build issue. We have problems uh, providing uh, ARM64 uh, uh, builds uh, in PyPy. I'm not any more user of H5Py in, from PyPy. I, I use from Conda Forge. So uh, they are, they solve this problem. But uh, for this repository, um, when they release to PyPy, people notice that it's missing. And apparently, some, some problems with Travis. CI um, system or build system. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so that's uh, that. That um, what was uh, what can go where we can go now. Um, let's go to PR. I think the most interesting currently and kind of a long, long cooking one is this one, which uh, which my coworker Matt uh, actually created, and um, should probably do something about it um, soon, not to miss another release. <laughs> uh, is that basically he implemented um, HDF? H5D read multi and write multi or multi yeah there you go read multi and and uh, um I don't know if they're both now or uh, there's just oh there it is so I assuming that there is a write multi as well now so this is something that um been going through a, a you know comment period and it's kind of gone quiet so um, I think it's time to revisit it. Um, I think it's an interesting feature. Uh, obviously, depends how many people in the Python land really think this seriously about HDF5 IO operations. But um, would be good to have this uh, functionality in H5Py as well. I could think of uh, at least a couple of interesting scenarios where this could uh, come handy. One of it, for example, is that. Um, if one adopts a column tab table approach to storing tabular data in HDF5. In other words, now each column becoming a separate HDF5 data set, then you kind of lose on, on right atomicity um, that before if you stored table rows as compound data type, then you basically had assurance by the library itself that once you write out the row, everything would be written out because it was all going to the same data set. So this could be an interesting um, feature maybe uh, for providing this kind of um, 
as I said, write atomicity and read uh, some ways. But it would be good if this gets moving. I think it's been now how long? Uh, yeah, so it's coming up on what five fifth month now. And I think as far as I can tell, uh, let me check now before I say something. Yeah, so it seems like a clean, clean uh, merge. There is no really um, problems. The only issue is uh, that, you know, the, the user interface, which is always a thing in H5Pi. Um, uh, you know, the HDF5 library API is developed sort of with more of C, C++ kind of programming style. And so uh, with h 5 the biggest challenge is how you actually incorporate those capabilities into something that users of Python can really understand and use in the way that they expect. But other than that, I think this is um, this is very interesting capability. And here, Matt actually included some examples. Um, so yeah, I think that um, one way to, to, to try out these things is to have them in HRFI because once that's available, then people can start using them more. <laughs> and um, And then they report problems. <laughs> either in their understanding of what that feature is about or some other issues in how the interface is done or something else. So, um, other than that, um, there's the sub-filing, which is more of an HPC, I think. At least that's how I understand it. Uh, it's been here for ages now. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't, yeah, more than a year. So, um, I'm not particularly, I myself am not you know HPC user, so I can't tell uh, what Pi, H5Pi user would really benefit from it, but I, I feel bad for this person who actually worked through this, uh, through, made this PR and not having really, uh, nothing happen afterwards. But, you know, sometimes when you have this community open source projects, uh, it comes down to, you know, a group popularity contest. contest. <laughs> It just feels like you know not enough people really uh, felt strongly about this feature in H5Pi. That's how I would try to interpret it. But uh, I would assume that it's not a clean merge anymore because it's been a while. Let's see all the way down. So there was some discussion. I apologize for this flash moving. Yes, so there are some things. So that's need more work. Um, other than that, um, let me see. The recent one, closed one was, um, yes, this was an interesting one. Um, it's already merged in Azure 5, but it's not in the release. Uh, so someone basically, well, actually what happened was, um, let me open this window. This is a longer standing issue. So someone was creating an H5Pi file with a global setting that the group link creation order is tracked. And then they would create a group and create a group. And then when they print it out, they were printed in the order of creation. So that worked. But then he closes the file and opens the file again. Uh, he was using here track order, thinking that's maybe going to fix the problem. And then after reopening, he would get the reverse order. In other words, it's not, the groups are not printed in the in the order of creation. And so um, now you can see, so this was the creation order. And then these groups were then printed in, you know, not by the creation order. And so um, Someone then discovered that basically, if you um, in H5 Pi code, if you replace, well, actually, if you don't use the file creation property list after opening the file, instead you go for the root groups creation property list, then everything is working fine. And so I'm not sure if this is something missed in the library itself, that if you created the file with the tracking order global setting, and then you query the file creation property list afterwards. D does that, that tracking order thing is still available or not? Or is it should be available or it should not be available? It doesn't matter. But anyway, in H5Pi now, um, what they, the fix is in the PR that essentially 
uh, it is done and checked. If it's a file creation process, try the root group uh, instead of the file. And then there you go. This is the uh, the fix. And we can see where that is fixed, but I think it's uh, somewhere over here. Um, let me see more here. Yes, in the PyX somewhere here. There you go. Um, so to use the root group explicitly. Anyway, so that is uh, that is all I have uh, about H5Pi. Really, um, other other issues I can't really right now think what's the. Uh, um, kind of a fairly recent, or it has some uh, promise to actually get in H5Pi. So, um, well, is there any questions or uh, any comments, or I miss uh, represented something or misinterpreted something or any of that sort? Uh, let someone correct me, and then that's it. Hey, Alexander. Hey, Quincy. Hi. I am um, working on opening up some of the HDF5 API routines, the C API routines, to be concurrent for multi-threaded access. Mm -hmm. I understand, of course, Python's long-standing issues around multi-threading. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any sense of what it what might be both important and necessary to get Python access to be able to concurrently execute data set read calls, let's say? Um, well, what do you currently use for uh, concurrency in C? What would you use? How you would do it? Well, in C, um, once I've relaxed this restriction, the um, the general way I would expect is within a single process, spawn multiple threads with pthread or something, right? And then uh, have each thread make a data set read call. So, well, you know, just right now, I think the biggest issue is that whatever is needed in terms of how to run threads and things is the question, do you want to expose that control to someone in Python or not? Do they need to be aware of that happening or not? Um, if, if they need to be aware of it and control it in some way, then um, there was, um, yeah, there, there's a Python standard package that does threading. Okay. And so the question is, you know, do you how to connect that with whatever you would use so that the user can say, okay, now I'm controlling the threading and you know multi threads and all that stuff, right. rather than something it's totally itself. transparent. You know, I, I'm not making any policies and doing anything. I'm just allowing multiple threads to enter the library. So whatever the the right Python way is, should just start allowing more threads in. Yeah, I think so. I mean that that's that that's the first step. Because some maybe two years ago there was someone, I don't know if it was LN, LLNL or someone like that. There was a there was a essentially it was a question. They had a they had a vol or they had a version of H5Pi or something for asynchronous um, yeah. capabilities, yeah. and they wanted to have that in H5Pi, mm -hmm. and and where everything kind of came to a head was where the, well, the Python side of things says, well, okay, but we would really like to use the Python's um async engine or how python does it so we just pass that thing to whatever you want to do it right. and that and that software was actually using something else for that and 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 so right. uh, so that those kind of things are the first step after that uh i guess then um that's a good good start i would call <laughs> and then on to a next uh, situation yeah. But also in so it won't be a ball connector. It's not async. Yeah. It doesn't do any of those things. It just allows threads into the library concurrent. So that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
because HYPy heavily uses the you know grabbing the the Python's global interpreter lock, right? Um, and that kind of thing. So that that's another step to see how that would. Uh, that's what I'm really thinking of. I'm concerned about. Yes, yes, yes. And the main reason I'm understanding why it was done is to really never allow HDF5 library and HYPy to get out of sync with whatever whoever thinks something object is open or closed or anything else. Mm -hmm. Uh, and be, Once you, you open know, up multiple list, threads, uh, then it's up to the user to make certain that their threads do sensible things. Yeah, yeah. What can go wrong? And so, uh, and so, yeah. So there, yeah, that would be my first thought. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll do a little more investigation around the right thing for Python threads, and maybe uh, code up some examples and play with it a little bit. One of them will further down the line, I think. But yeah. Cool. So, all right, any more questions? Um, if not, then uh, I shall wrap up. Uh, thanks for attending and uh, hopefully um, see you next, well, see you virtually uh, next month. Thanks. Thanks, bye.